Thank you so much for sitting down and talking to me today. How did you first hear about this project and how did you get involved? Uh, Warwick's a very good friend of ours. We've known all each other for a very long time. Um, I don't know, I was invited to sort of uh, read the script and if I wanted to be part of it. And it was a no brainer. I was going to say yes anyway. So that's sort of how I got involved. Yeah, for me, similar. Um, I knew about the script, I read it three years ago when it was a different formation. And he said, oh, you're going to play the character of George. And um, I was like, yeah, for sure. And then, that's like, and then I think the Kate came with George. The character of the player became a So and it all happened very quickly. Mm. So, yeah, it's been around for a while, but then it just happened. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, what was it about your characters that did, um, you know, drew you to them? And... Um, look, the story in general is a really beautiful story. It has a unique point of view. And knowing Warwick's sort of way of working and his ideas, we're just going to sort of elevate what was already there. I think my character, I play Sister Mum. And she is a surrogate mother to these boys in the orphanage. So she's, I don't know, she's a really beautiful, gentle sort of character. Um, and that I really loved playing, playing for me. Yeah, I, I, for me, I think George, he's the station man. So I suppose when I think about it, even today, in another film, you have many lead actors and adults. In this film, there's only three. There's three of us that run this monastery, right? And there's seven young boys. So it's just like, it was just, you, you felt very naked because there was only three of us, but the seven young boys, every day, they would cut you down to size. <laughs> they were joyful and it just, it sort of gave you a little bit of reality of what this world was. Same like George and Fee, they're sort of, you know, their they're father that they never had really, you know, in the sense of being there every day for the, these lives of these kids. So, um, yeah, we sort of, when we started to understand how the three of us worked in this monastery in 1942 in Australia, uh, it, it just became easy. Yeah. And yeah, your character even introduces herself, look, by name, as in, um, if you don't have a mom, you can call me sister mom. Yeah. Um, that already shows the um, the maternal figure she she is to those two boys. Um, how did you work um, with the children on, like you just mentioned, also you as a paternal figure, because um, your character is the first one to you know offer him the the bread with the mom uh, or jam on it. Yeah. yeah. yeah sorry. Um, how did you work? Um, like, did you also rehearse with the the boys on uh, your relationship to them like yeah. like we we had rehearsals and the boys had a wonderful drama teacher and dramaturg so she really took care of the boys and allowed them to understand the world that we were creating and, and what logistically what a film set's about because none of these boys had set a set foot on a film set before so you know there, there was a lot of support around them, uh, which made it then easier for us to come in and sort of yeah. form that relationship with them yeah very much so i think with the young people it's sort of as i said um every day that you know you, you just have to be patient but also get out of your own head and just relax Wayne, and be the character of george and enjoy it even though there's some you know there's black magic or in the film or if there's religion we talk about the sort of spirituality how that's how they sort of fight with each other but i think also for this, it was just, it was one of the best sets because of these young people and because of us three. And we knew each other a lot. So you're going to work every day with a smile on your face, even though there was some like uh, deep subject matter. So yeah, it was, it was a great job. Yeah, you mentioned deep subject matter. Um, and it's actually quite, I want to say, shocking to see it uh, portrayed that way because um, as a viewer, you see how how similar the new boy actually is to the Jesus that they, you know, worship, and yet they see him as, as unholy or something. Um, how do you deal with these different, uh, you know, the, the correlation between um, the original, you know, culture and um, the, the, these forced upon Western religion? Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's a, that, that could be a thesis in itself, right? Um, what's happened in our country with um, our own culture uh, juxtaposed that with the Western system, right? But for the moment in this film, I think from George's point of view, he, he, he's seen this magic before um, from with this young boy reveals, right? And um, 
in his example of what he's it, it, it wasn't very good that first example so in a sense he's sort of that conscience of the film like in a sense of just just being wary of this new energy and he's got his world there and i'm sure he's been through a few things being 50 plus on this station the government of the day so he just wants everything to be um you know to, 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 no changes so i think this new boy with the magical powers that he delivers or he, he brings to the monastery um george's people of that how we dealt with that um yeah. well look, one of the things i think was really great that warwick sort of set up for us is that the, it's almost like a fable it's once upon a time he was a young little boy he was delivered in the middle of the night to a monastery run by two nuns and a, you know in a, in a stock and so he wanted to have that sense of peter pan about it that it was this, this sort of this innocence this youth that it sort of elevated itself out of the reality of the world that we know and that history that we know and sort of take it into a and uh into that sort of um into that sort of not fairy tale but it is you know it's, it's lifts it a little bit and it sort of really explores that sort of collision that interception of spirituality and every character in this this story is really sort of has to answer that question for themselves what is faith what does that mean to each of them and new boy really presents that question really hard to them because he has completely new to us he comes with these powers so it really forces everyone around them to sort of figure out who he is yeah. and how he fits in. Is he good? Is he bad? So, yeah. And it was interesting to play too, because as one and these young boys, uh, they, they've never been on a film set in their lives. And as one, for me, my character would always be looking at him in a sort of a really wary, not mean way, just going, if you cause any trouble, I'm going to, you know, I'll, you know, I'll get you for whatever. So, because as one, it's an angel, you know, and uh, so we just have to say, I'm only acting, you know, yeah, I know you're only acting, <laughs> so you're only acting now. He was like, Yeah, cool, and it's just a, it's in the last couple of days, it's been fantastic, but anyway, yeah. What, well, yeah, and any other challenges, um, that you faced uh, during production? Oh, look, you know, weather wise, we had a couple of floods <laughs> out there, so um, yeah, you know, which sort of wasn't great for, for the set. They built this beautiful monastery on the hill. So um, sometimes the weather got in the way, COVID got in the way a little bit. But apart from that, I was really lovely, relaxed sort of working environment. The kids were wonderful. Like Wayne said, like he was just coming to set with a smile on your face every day. It didn't feel like a challenge or hard in any way. Yeah, that doesn't happen a lot. You get these um, moments where the stars align and you get a project and you're, you're sharing a story and you got a chance to share it with the world now. So uh, it's, yeah, you feel very blessed. Yeah. And um, you also mentioned you've um, worked with Rory quite a lot. Um, how would you say that your working relationship has um, evolved over the years? Um, for me, it's a lot about trust. And like when you work with someone a lot and you do, uh, you, you, you do work that you're proud of, um, there's a secondhand nature, which is so, that's awesome. And then there's a trust, but there's also, I think, what he sort of gets out of us is a sense of play. Mm. So we can provide something that he didn't think about, but it's sort of um, welcomes it. So that sense of play and joy is there every day. Mm. And uh, but it's, it's, it's over 23 years, 25 years of knowing someone. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, and it is. Um, also, you know, we're, we're, we're at that sort of sense of, you know, being a family, being comfortable. So you can sort of... Not only not a challenge, but you just go, what does this mean? So there is a, like you know, saying, there's a secondhand sort of language, you know, shortcut language that we all share that because we know each other so well, and it's it just makes the conversation a lot easier and get to the get to where we need to be a lot quicker. And how important was it uh, for you as a, Aboriginal actors to tell this story and? then also to present it here at an international festival such as the Cannes Film Festival. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, like incredibly special. Particularly that, you know, our leading boy is a young 10-year-old boy from Alice Springs. You know, he's never um, acted before and he just does such a wonderful job in this film. And, you know, we're just sort of sitting back as his proud aunties and uncles and just, you know, seeing his confidence grow in the time that we've been here. And, you know, also shine a light on who we are as, as a culture and as, as a country. 
Yeah, I think so. You know, in the last 10 or 15 years, uh, First Nations girls from our country are more accepted more well. And that sounds ridiculous. But um, and um, there's a sense of um, responsibility about that as well, but also to go, you know what, this is who we are. And there's, there's so many more stories out there from great filmmakers in our country. Mm-hmm. And to be part of this one again, it's, 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 as I said, it's a blessing, but it's um, it's work, but it's uh, it's sort of a part of our lives. And, you know, you know, and that we just go, hello, we just sort of, it's, it's a good sort of, it's a good equation to be. Yeah. But, it's yeah. not lost on us where we are right now. Yeah. It's not lost on us all. So it's, we're really proud um, that we're here and that the film has resonated, you know, with so many people. Uh, uh, we're looking forward yeah. to seeing it. <laughs> Because I think also too, we take, and it's great to be here, don't worry, and the, the world needs to see this film, but when we go back to Australia and uh, our Australian audiences will see it, you know, um, and it's a, it's a, as I said, there's a thesis in our country and it's, it's we are a okay place, but there's more work to be done. So films like this, stories like this, where we see like, Aboriginal actors and on screen and like with Kate Blanchett, you know, uh, it's that does a lot, that does a lot for people. Yeah. It's great too because Warwick is so um, respected back home. Yeah. Yeah. This is, you know, the next anticipated sort of film from Warwick Thornton. So his sort of creative language just sort of evolves and just gets stronger. And, and you know, I think this is going to be an incredibly special film that he's going to present to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.